Welcome to Bloodbath and Beyond. Today we're doing a retrospective review of curtains. Behind every curtain, someone is waiting, something is watching. The ultimate nightmare. Directed by Richard Kubka, starring John Vernon, Samantha Egger, Linda Thorsten, Lynn Griffin, and Leslie Donaldson. This movie is about the director of a play. In order to find the perfect talent, he decides to bring six potential actresses to his home to audition for the play. But the actress that was originally set to play Audra is fresh out of the insane asylum after committing herself so she can commit to method acting. And now the women are turning up dead. This is a Patreon recommendation from Jason Williams, who has consistently recommended older 80s films and this is one of those movies that I think we probably should have reviewed already. We meant to, me and Colin had watched it and we were gonna record a review and we just didn't for some reason. I don't know why, but it was like five years ago. So today we're gonna be talking about it and we will be doing a retrospective. So if you haven't seen this, probably don't watch this review. So what do we like? I like the hag mask. I think that's a really cool looking mask because it's creepy, it's weird looking, and it's got crazy ass hair. And also you have that nice attention to detail. You can see the eyes right through it. Sometimes when you get masks, they're like shifted to the side or like the holes are too big. But in this one, whoever's wearing it, it just like fit perfectly and it made it even more creepy because it like looked like it was legit a face. I didn't think it looked like a legit face. <laughs> a face for seducing. Bullshit. Now seduce me. I also like that our killer in general is just kind of killing it in a variety of ways and is not holding back on what they need to do to get the part, including taking up some ice skating. They sharpen their blades, they sharpen their sickle, they go to the pond and they just ice skate and then eventually kill a lady. I did like how the film portrayed the killer because all the girls basically look the same and are like framed the same. So each one had their own motive and each one could have been the killer. The biggest one one was Sammy. Like she went to the insane asylum for method acting. I think that is a risky move to do because this is what makes you nuts. You're gonna go in there, you're gonna get pilled up and you could get lobotomized by accident based on what was happening in there. Not the way to approach a role, but I'm also not an actor, so maybe it is, I don't know. I would be so pissed if I was her, to be honest. Like she had the strongest motive and I did like that. You thought that it could be any girl at any time, basically because you're just like, yeah, that makes sense. They're all pretty savage. But someone who's a little weirder is the fucking director. It's Stryker. That guy's savage. He was just basically bringing everyone up here to bang them, just like you would suspect because this stuff still happens today, unfortunately, where people abuse power. Nah, we're having sex or you're not getting the part kind of deal. And that's what happened here. But the oh snap moment. Oh snap! Striker laying in bed, smoking. Well, he just had sex with a new actress and Samantha walks in and he's just like, yup, I did the damn thing. Now let's see if you can get that gun and shoot it like I told you you couldn't. Audra could never pull the trigger. A woman discovering her lover in bed with someone else? You don't know much about women. He's just like, I'm gonna push her to her limits to see if she could possibly become my main my main lead. And yeah, she was a little too nuts. I would blame it on the method acting. But I mean, Joaquin Phoenix does that too, and he's not killing people, so that's, that's a bonus. Although I did hear he's a dick sometimes. I really liked our location for this film. It gave that like really eerie atmosphere because it was like kind of a creepy mansion and the end chase scene through like the prop house really had good tension and good build up for like a cat and mouse style with the killer and one of the actresses. Like you have all of the curtains hanging up. You have all of the different set pieces, which this girl's running around like trying to start this obvious prop car and this prop motorcycle. It's like, ma'am, look around. None of this is real. She goes to the exit side. Like, yes, it's a brick wall behind it because she doesn't like get that this is a prop house. But it, it was cool for the tension because you're like looking at all the things hanging up, all the different wardrobes and there's her friend. Well, maybe not her friend. Maybe she would have liked that. She's like, oh, <laughs> I guess I'm ahead of the game. I really like that scene. It's one of the more memorable scenes aside from the skating rink one for me. Also, speaking of curtains, I was a sucker for the curtain transition. This worked. It made sense. They did a lot of like cheesy things with that as far as like the production side of things. Like even the cast at the end, they just called like act one. The director at the beginning of the movie was the director that was in the movie and not the actual director of the film. Then we got Lynn Griffin, who is an actress that goes from like Black Christmas to this and Strange Brew, which 
I'm pretty sure in our like Black Christmas review, I probably dropped like a, a Strange Brew reference. She did a fantastic job in this film. She was the comedy actress wanting to be taken serious. So like she has like that switch where like she's really funny and how she's doing things, she's not taking it serious. Then like next moment she's like telling Stryker off and showing that range. Damn it, you haven't spent five minutes with me and now you're telling me I'm wrong for the part. Why? Because I haven't got a staple through my navel like that centerfold? That was awesome. And that proved me wrong as well. Cause I'm like, there's no way you're gonna be taken serious. You just, every single line you're doing is a joke. Like get out of here, you don't belong here. Give it to Sam. I was thinking that and I'm not the director, but if I was, I wouldn't have picked her until she told me off and I'd be like, Mmm, put that mask on, let's see those eyes, girl. Now seduce me. Well, it is a slower burn and it is a whodunit. I was never necessarily bored. Everything worked well together. Even though the girls like looked the same, they all had their individual personalities. You had like the older woman who was intimidated by some of the young girls. You had the skater, you had the dancer. They all had their own individuality. So it was cool to try and see how they were going to die or how they could have been the killer and incorporated some of their personality into said killings. And even up until the end, you're still going to be questioning who the killer is. They did a really great job at that. I like that when certain actresses died, they did point out those traits that makes them unique. Like we talk about like the skating one, we talked about like the dancer, but like even the older woman, the setup there, she found a head in her toilet and everyone's like, oh, she's just an alcoholic, so clearly she's seeing things. Yeah, take your pills. There's some good stuff here. And then there's Matthew, who is also making terrible decisions by drinking a whole bottle of vodka and skidooing into the forest and just, he's gone. He was the weirdest part of this. Like, we needed him, of course, for the jacuzzi sex, because that's how you get your nudity. But like, he was such a useless character, but I did like him simply because you just see him speeding off into the woods. To be fair. Uh, to be fair. To be fair. Well, to be you don't get your nudity from that. You get your nudity from acting out a scene where you have to pretend to be a guy seducing a woman by like slowly touching her boob. That was so awkward. Now what didn't we like? I will agree, we did touch base on this. Everyone looks the same, so it's hard to like pinpoint who is who. If Samantha put her hair up, she would look like the alcoholic with the perm. At moments I'd be like, oh, like why, I thought Samantha was in this room. And like the way that the film was cut, it jumps around a bit. So you really try and question like, she's in the asylum. And then all of a sudden there's like this girl and then another girl. And you're like, wait, is that Samantha or is this someone else? Too many people look alike. Especially if they're shooting them from the back or something, you just see like a brunette, like, oh, well, which one? They all dress posh. They have their hair in certain ways. It's like, well, y'all look the same. Well, we did meet our ladies. The fact that I can't tell you many of their names, like I know Sam's name. And I barely remember Lynn Griffin's name and she was like a dominant role. I get that they mentioned their names throughout the film, but I was paying attention and I was trying to follow what was happening and I walked out of there not knowing their names, which is kind of fucked. Especially when you're supposed to care about all of these people. I understand that it's like a pretty big cast, but I mean like, it's not that big. I wasn't a huge fan of the closing shot of this film. Lynn Griffin is the killer and the closing shot is her doing her stand-up bit at an insane asylum. It's safe to assume that that happened after she killed a bunch of people, got arrested and put in there. But at the same time, this could have been beforehand and maybe the stand-up routine that we saw at Yuck Yucks, yeah. I don't know like if it was in her head or not. Yeah, like it makes you like question if she was crazy this whole time and got out. What if she was in the same asylum as Sam doing this thing like, oh, I could be an actor too because I'm crazy. Right, and they watched her on TV and they just continuously talked for however long mm -hmm. Sam was in the in asylum. This is a reasonable thing to think if you're watching this for the first time and you don't know, you haven't heard a commentary or listened to anyone talk about it. And that's the thing, the reveal of her being the killer is great. Like that's like a really cool twist and I enjoyed that aspect. But the fact that it just goes to the asylum without any explanation, that kind of sucks for a closing shot. Yeah, and looking into the trivia, apparently that's not how it was supposed to be. Like the original idea was to have her giving her comedy routine to all of her victims, which sounds amazing. And you'd walk out of this movie knowing that, yes, she's crazy, but at the end of the day, she would have like had her little spotlight in her own weird little world. 
six actresses going to the same house to audition for the same part. Oh, yeah. Well, it sounds like a lot of fun if you like bloodbaths. Now it's time for our final thoughts and ratings. Curtains is a fun whodunit. I enjoyed the pacing, I liked our actresses, and the killer. Like the hag is just a cool look and you don't know who it's going to be until the very end. And the end is pretty solid, but right after the reveal of Lynn Griffin being the killer, I don't like the, the last little bit, but everything else is pretty good. I do wish that on our one-on-one -on -one kind of like segments with our actors, we learned a little bit more about them and I think they should have had different looks or at least dressed differently or something so that the audience knows exactly who is who. And maybe it's just because we're in 2020 now and in the 80s it wasn't a big deal. I'm used to like, oh, the goth chick? Yeah, she looks like she's got spiky shit all over her. She wears black. The preppy chick looks a certain way. Everyone has their own different styles, but back in the 80s, everyone seemed to have the same goddamn style which is weird. There were a lot of memorable shots, and I think this is better for like a first time viewing, but I don't know it's one that I would want to watch often, but it's still worth a watch. So I'm gonna give this three and a half creepy ass dolls out of five. I really enjoyed Curtains because it was a good whodunit. We had a great cast that gave us a series of red herrings. Each one had a really good motive and it was believable to have Samantha be our like main focus as a killer and then throw a twist with it being Lynn Griffin. However, the closing shot really was pretty lame. Another issue I had with this film was the characters did look a lot alike and it was hard to like distinguish who was who. No one was really memorable, even to the point that the cat and mouse chase scene near the end of the film, I didn't know if that was supposed to be our final girl or not, because you're like, well, she's put up a good fight, but who is she again? But we did get a lot of cool kills out of it with each character dying kinda in relation to what their trait was. It's well paced and well shot, and I would recommend it. So with that being said, I'm gonna give this film Four Tickle Monsters out of five. As always, thank you for watching. Like this video and comment below with your thoughts on the film if you've seen it. If you have any you do want, check it out. Links are in the description. And if you want the opportunity to recommend a movie for us to review, check out the link to the Patreon, also in the description. And if it's your first time here, make sure you subscribe to the channel, stay up to date with everything, Bloodbath and beyond. Bye.